there are some burning questions around the league with the upcoming draft. We got to answer these things and see how that might impact the draft and further beyond. What's up? It's your boy Citron. Come back to another analysis slash news video. And I kid you not, that's my real name. And yeah, man, we're getting into NFL burning questions. Adam Shine comes with nine because the he just likes it rising his name. Um, what's next for Lamar Jackson? Who should be drafted number one overall? Let's get into such hot topics. All right. Which QB should get paid next? All right, so obviously on the on the slate, uh, Jalen Hurts just got paid in a mega deal, five-year, $255 million deal. He's the NFL's highest-paid player. Forget being highest-paid quarterback. He is that as well, automatically, because he's uh, uh, the uh, highest-paid player. But Patty Mahomes got paid a couple seasons ago, 2019, and Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert, as well as Lamar Jackson, we will table him for a question down this list further, uh, further down this list. Anyways. Which one of them should get paid first? Um, if you want to go by merit, you should say Justin Herbert, then Joe Burrow, because the last person to get paid should get, should get paid and will get will get paid the highest. But realistically speaking, it could be either one of them. Um, Joe Burrow has taken his team to the Super Bowl. Obviously, they, they like Jalen Hurts, came up short. Um, I mean, I say Joe Burrow, right? Justin Herbert has, I think, a playoff appearance or two, but he's not on the same tra trajectory despite being you know the uh superior oh well, he could say he, he has he, in one season at least he had superior output but um he has a lower ceiling because he's just he doesn't have the weapons that burrow has there in cincinnati and um even with working with a patchwork o-line he did work last year and justin herbert wasn't able to um he hasn't reached the uh, plateau where he can uh, really lift all ties with his play. I mean, he, he's exceptional, don't get me wrong, um, but it just hasn't translated to wins yet. So um, theoretically, you should say Justin Herbert, then Joe Burrow, but either one of them being the highest paid player wouldn't make, wouldn't be too strange out of the ordinary. So either or, it really doesn't matter because, I mean, my, my dude's paid. I'm lucky he got paid first so they can go ahead and break the bank for those guys and set them up like a Daniel Jones track contract we looked at yesterday. Horrible. Four years, $160 million, But I've never seen a contract look so bad as far as the numbers with the cap. All right, number two. How does Odell's arrival in Baltimore change Lamar's situation? To be honest, eh, it really doesn't. Um, we don't know what Odell is at this point. We, he's not the top five receiver that he once was and not even top ten. Um, we might be top 15, somewhere between 15 and 20, um, which is still, you know, saying a lot. He, he can give you a lot. Um, he, he can, if he's healthy, he can, uh, he can touch a thousand, give you, uh, close to double digit TDs, seven to nine TDs, um, good number of receptions on time. And, you know, he knows, um, how to get open. He's still explosive, even given the, uh, the ACL surgeries and doesn't have the ACL, <laughs> Or he didn't have one um, before went to the Rams. But that being said, it's just it, it's it, Lamar is is a tricky situation because you know there's such bad blood going on there, and he signed without any guarantees of Lamar you know being there. So that should tell you all that you need to know. Um, it was he wasn't it wasn't contingent on him you know uh, playing there. Most important thing for Odell was a payday, and that also is informative of the situation. So. Uh, this really doesn't tell us much. Um, yeah, of course, Lamar would like to play with him, but he's going to prioritize his contract, so. Could be, what do you call it, uh, going with a purple-haired guy or somewhere else. What should the Aaron Rodgers trade composition look like? Uh, I like the suggestions here, but they're still kind of light for me. A two and then a conditional two that turns into a one, that sounds like a perfect formula, but... Are the Packers really, you know, re resolute on getting a one from them, from the Jets? I mean, they have the number 13 pick. That would be nice. But is that too much for, you know, the Jets uh, for their uh, wish list, or their asking uh, price? Is it too high for them? Um, a one in a conditional, a one in something this year, a one in something next year. Um, that's solid. Or a, they're not giving up both twos. Um, even though that would be a decent offer. And, and you know, could, could, you, could you combine some players in there as well? I mean, they're not going to want to move a piece like Quentin Williams, you know, or something valuable, valuable like that, but would help uh, anything that would help Jordan Love there. 
defense or offense would be welcome. But I think that's a good solution here uh, to in the future because teams don't value for some strange reason their future picks like um, how Roseman does, <laughs> to be honest. Um, or I should say like uh, like they should. You know, future picks are seen with a less, uh, less valuable be light and it's seen in a less valuable light because simply it is the future it's not here yet and you don't know what you know year to year you could be you know you could be a top five team or you could be a bottom five team and that would really uh lower the value of that that pick so you know teams are willing to roll the dice per se and all that but i mean uh, you got to believe it you know something like this is very accurate but the fact that they haven't moved on it just tells me that both sides are somewhat comfortable in, in trying to get what they want and uh wait in playing the waiting game all right, number four, which prospect should the Panthers draft at number one? Um, they were originally settled on, on Bryce Young, and it looks like they're kind of selling in on drafting Bryce Young. I know he's, you know, top quarterback out of Alabama and uh, star-studded, uh, put up really good stats, but he is only 5'10". That's, you know, the, the big uh, holdup for them. He's 204 pounds, and he weighed so uh, at, the, at the combine. Light, shorter. But if you believe that's the guy, then, you know, go with him. Um, otherwise, you know, you don't settle on the C.J. Stroud and then kind of, like, pout and complain for the, you know, next decade or so and um, allow that to set you back. You know, you, you put on your big boy britches, make the pick, and be happy and satisfied with it. Um, but if you don't feel that's the guy, go with a stopgap this year and then, you know, um, hopefully, you know, you're at the top of the draft again next year and you can make or select the guy that you need or you have enough capital to move pieces to be able to get the guy that you want. So, I mean, um, it, you know, it is a different NFL, you know, 10, even 10 years ago, 15 years ago, definitely 20 years ago, you know, he would be a third round quarterback or, you know, below, you know, maybe a day, what we call now a day three pick, which is a day, which was a day two pick. Uh, we used to have rounds one through four on our day one and then round uh, one, one through three, I want to say, one through four, and then five, six, seven, and then move down to one, two, three, and then four, five, six, seven. And now we've got, three days because they just you know want the you know about the money so i mean um it, it, it is what it is i mean like i, I just it, they shouldn't compromise um i'm glad that we didn't compromise on uh jayla hurts sorry <sighs> him being the quarterback that he is and he was at that time we uh were okay you know with with trying to develop him and like we did like we struck out on the russell wilson trade well and you don't want to come here great thank you for not coming to philly because <laughs> you're burning that food up in denver in, in the high altitude air <laughs> air fryer <laughs> you can cook all right next what's up in houston should texas trade out at number two um it all depends on the compensation so if they get you know uh some a one a couple ones one this year and then you know next year or the team that has multiple ones this year and then get some other, you know, some uh, day uh, two compensation. Hey, go for it. I would, I would say, you know, it, it all depends on what they get because teams, I mean, it, it's all contingent. You know, this this whole Russian roulette with quarterbacks, who's going to get picked? You know, we're pretty sure that, you know, Bryce Young, CJ Stroud are going to go within the top five. Um, some, I don't, we don't know the order. It depends on this 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 pick. And also, um, it could be three quarter. It could be three quarterbacks. Very rare case it could be four with Will Levis included, but I don't think so. And I, and I would also push up, you know, Hendon Hooker. Um, that Hooker will go early. <laughs> um, but I mean, it it really you know depends on uh, who's trading up, what they're offering, and and, and um, it, is it some kind of pre range deal D draft day? Because I mean, you don't have a lot of time. We're pretty sure that you know the number one pick is gonna come off the clock like that. They're not going to waste time if they do. It's just, it's a formality, basically, because they they have all the time in the world to make the decision. They're not going to go up to draft day and be like, oh, waffling. They're going to, they're they're resolute right now on their pick. Uh, or not right now. They're going to be resolute before next week, Thursday or Friday, whatever it is. And um, number two, you're not going to have that much time. So this, you can see some um, some wheels be put in motion um, preemptively for someone to come up and get this number two pick if they want that, if they truly do. It's a, it's a, Depending on where you are, it's going to be a huge price to pay, you know, if you're, especially if you're in the back end or even in the middle. It's going to have to move heaven and earth to get there. Even just trading one pick is going to, you know, you have to get like a, a, a day two pick. At the very least, a number two, we're talking, um, 
to even to just move a spot. So um, it, it's it's gonna be uh, interesting how things you know f uh, f uh, fall out, I say flow out and develop. But um, it's very valuable, and they, 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 Houston said they're listening, um, and you, you honestly should because if you can get compensation, they have the number two and the number twelve pick. If you can get the compensation, um, and and still you know get your guy or your guys that you want, have at it. Be really smart. Do the Giants have a Saquon Barkley problem? Uh, uh, no, not really. Volu people make too much about voluntary arguments. I think him, several other guys, um, the tight end in Jacksonville, um, Evan Ingram didn't sign his deal yet. Uh, Dexter Lawrence is skipping here. Uh, Saquon is, uh, Lamar Jackson has signed his. I mean, that was expected. But I think most of the guys that got the franchise tag, uh, Josh Jacobs didn't sign his they have not signed. So, I mean, that just shows their discontentness with, you know, that one year shackling deal that, um, I mean, it's guaranteed for injury. They, they, you know, they can, they'll get paid or whatever, whatever, but, um, it's still only a one year shot and you don't get the guarantee the you know, long term security with, you know, coming that comes with a uh, long term deal and guarantees and, and stretch out over, you know, two, three, four, five, six, the, the lifetime of a contract. So, um, no, it's not a big problem. We'll see when the pads come on. Do really show up? But um, he likes the team. I think he likes what, you know what they're doing and what they're building, uh, building apart from last year. But this is just kind of like you know the new age thing to do, kind of like you know Twitter and they uh, take down all the pictures and all that. It's like ah, kitsch. Is B. John Robinson worth a top ten selection? Absolutely, he is. I hope he goes to the goddamn Eagles. You see the Edron James comparison here, Edron James clone. Man, yeah, I mean, I believe he's a little bit sweeter than that. Um, so I'm a little bit short. Um, he's like a fusion to me. Um, on par with uh, Christian McCaffrey when it comes to the receiving game. But, I mean, like I said, he fits in any system. He's 21 years old, years old fresh legs. He had 250 plus carries. But, and with, for only, man, not only for, uh, for 1,500 yards, but outside of this past season, he hasn't uh, been taxed a huge amount. 1,100 yards the previous year before that. And then, a timeshare all three years um, with a backup number two, I forget his name, Johnson. But, I mean, it's crazy. Like, he's one of the, you know, the generational talents we've seen, you know, the best talents at running back we've seen. And people are still doubting the effect that he would have on the Eagles. I'm going to get that to that later and someday this week. But, man, it'd be great to have him in fucking Midnight Green. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, the Cardinals could take him. I mean, like, the Giants, you know, could take him. Um, the Bears could take him. I mean, like, he's worthy worthy of the selection, but there's just so much talent. Even though he's a top three, top five talent um, in this draft class, there's just so much value to be had at the top half, especially the top 15. Which team should be making the biggest push for DeAndre Hopkins? Man, this is a good question. Um, they say here the Bills. I mean, that would be nice. Where, where would he fit in? The question is, where would he fit in? Like, just look at the contenders. Let's look at the guys that made the playoffs um, in the NFC. The uh, 49ers, he'd be a great addition. Um, and, you know, you get to play against the Cardinals twice. Um, let's see, who else made the playoffs? I mean, like, because I'm not, we'll just look at contenders because I'm guessing he doesn't want to go to a team that has to rebuild, start over like he is with the Cardinals, um, even though he's, He's willing to stay there because I mean, like, yeah, he's he's a you know solid guy and loyal and so like that. But if he was given a choice, Eagles, I mean, like, you just don't have the you know the the cap room or the uh, space for him. You know, as far as like uh, volume, he's not going to get a lot of catches coming here. Um, Dallas, they would take him. They would take him. Um, but he'd be number three as well because they just brought in um, Brandon Cooks or would Brandon Cooks fall to number three? Just still be that would be a solid trio um, there. New York Giants, they could definitely use them, and they they have the money, so um, could be a sneaky pick. Um, let's see, Vikings, yeah, sure. Would you want to go there? Kirk, I think he would. He'd work with Kirk, Kirk Cousins, and him and Jeter would be nice together. Um, let's see. This I mean, there's a whole bunch of teams you could go to potentially, but let's go to the AFC. Um, the Miami Dolphins, you're not really, no, no space there. Um, we just covered the Bills. The Chiefs, man, they might be looking at them like, oh, no, come here. I mean, that, that would make them even more dangerous. A, a, a legit possession receiver who runs killer routes, 
uh, catch jump balls. Yeah, they they, they kill for that. Um, let's see the Bengals. They don't have room for them. They got already got trail receivers that are top notch. Um, let's say let's see let's see make you look at one more team. Um, not the Raiders. Yeah, I, I, I mean, okay, we'll, we'll scrap that. But I mean, there's a handful of teams that you go to that you would improve, or just be a luxury kind of like player for them, not luxury, true luxury. But um, Bills might just be the best fit though out of them though. I agree. Which team faces the most pressure in this draft? Man, I'd say the teams that are at the top. Man, the Colts. They say the Colts here with nine picks, pressure to get this right. But I just, I mean, yeah, sure. They could trade some of that for future draft capital next year. They, I mean, they could, the quarterback class is supposed to be better next year. They'd actually be do better holding off and then drafting a guy. I think that would be a, the better way to go. Um, let Gardner Minshew play or whatever, and then, you know, make, you could bring in another guy um, just for security. And you never want to suck for a luck strategy type, but if it fits, wear the shoe. Be Cinderella. Um, who else? Let's see, like the uh, the, the Panthers. Yeah. Anybody who has a uh, is, is in the play for a quarterback, they trade it up. Yeah. The Bears building to uh, to get fields more. Arizona, they're starting over. The regime, Houston, they have two top 15 picks. A two, uh, number two and uh, number 12. Immense pressure to nail those picks. And also, that means that they're picking at the top of every uh, every round. So they got to get it right. Um Let's see. Not the Saints. Oh, yeah, I mean, well, uh, to buttress Derek Carr. Uh, who else is in the top 10? The Raiders, man. They they, they just they got to turn that corner if they're going to be able to do it. Um, let's see. I mean, yeah, you said Arizona. But, I mean, it's... Yeah, if you're holding a top, especially if you're holding a top five pick, but any anywhere in the top ten except for the Eagles, you got to do it. And even you know, even us, there's pressure obviously for us to get more picks, so trade down. How we do it, that's the pressure. But Howie Roseman welcomes that shit. All right, but that's the list, anyways. Let's get into some news around the league. So man, I like some some of the things. I'm seeing that here, Nate, the popular guys that are making the tour: uh, C.J. Shroud, Nolan Smith, Anthony Richardson, Deontay Banks. Nice, it'd be a nice addition. Well, I mean, it'd be a luxury for them to make a good trio of uh, defenders, though. Auburn edge rusher Derek Hall, man. Uh, he runs a, a low 4-5. Four, four, uh, speed edge rusher out of Auburn. Talented guy. Uh, so a back and a guard. I don't like Florida, but talented guy, though. Uh, Broderick Jones. Xavier Howard uh, hurt in week two. It looks He's, he's self-proclaimed. Saying it's gonna be healthy, you know, a lot of stuff. They're like, I, f- I feel the best I felt in my career. You see that tagline? You're like, ah, I smell bullish. Um, Brian Branchman brought in. Man, this is a low key good signing. Olamide Zacchaeus from um, the Atlanta Falcons. A small receiver, five foot eight, but solidly built. 193 pounds, man. A slot guy. Brought in, man, to compete with Quez Watkins. He's gonna give him some, um, some true pressure there. In the slot, he competed for that job. He, he has the, the tools to steal it. A fast guy runs faster than his four four nine. Uh, good good catcher of the football. Had five hundred yards last year. Uh, operated sixty percent of uh, his snaps out of the slot. Man, I like this guy. I really like him, and, I, and he also brings spe- has special teams value as a uh, returner. Man, I, you couldn't have asked for more. Good depth signing, and maybe you could also move Quez out to the outside and. Have him primarily, primarily be the backups to um, Devontae Smith and um, AJ Brown. It would limit his snaps and limit his impact, but you also get him on the field. Maybe some four receiver sets. Also bring him in, still bring him in because he shadowed, not shadowed, he played in the slot last year. Um, so it just deepens our roster, especially at, you know the, re- the receiving room. We had a need. I don't know if he could play that Zach Pascal enforcer role you know, we had last year. But you know, draft a guy. I, I want. I still want to bring in a guy, uh, Trey Palmer, from uh, Nebraska. Just look up stats, man. This, this guy, he has the potential, and he can. He has a he's a whip smart guy, and he, he has the capacity to learn. So, all the errors and flaws in his game, he can fix, and we'll do a, a spotlight uh, profile on him later. But um, man, it'd be great. It just would be great. 
All right, um, we'll get into some of those on the front page. Zach Charbonnet, another guy I like. If we don't draft uh, Bijan, he's my first pick that I would like. Um, would be a, a step below, but hey, it is what it is. All right, let's look at some other things around the league. Teams calling the 49ers for a potential trade for QB Lance. I mean, Trey Lance drafted, uh, he was like second overall pick. And because of Purdy, now he's been displaced, hurt last year, ankle, and then, you know, the rest was history. Purdy went on to have a stellar year. And he's on the trading block. And, I mean, they're going to maybe get some value for him. Maybe not as much as uh, they want. But, man, how quickly things can turn in the NFL. It also stands for not for long. Um, Sam Howell going to give everything to be QB number one. I don't think he's ready. So, Washington, get ready for a uh, roller coaster ride. All right, um, Pro Bowl guard Lindstrom uh, plays for the Falcons, cash in, being really boring. I mean, that's the best trade you could have as an offensive lineman. People never call your name. You're out of the spotlight. People know who you are. But, the, you know, your, your uh, contemporaries and coaches, true diehard fans know who you are. That's all. Hey, nothing wrong Nothing wrong about uh, going about your, your game quietly, shutting guys down, and, then, you know, getting paid while you're at it. All right, MJD ranks uh, running back draft class just for shock. Like, he always does this. I'm like, you don't. Even, do you even believe the words are coming out of your own mouth? Yeah, Jam- Jameer Gibbs at number one, which nobody in this class, besides maybe if you're a freak, you know, like thinking wise and, and you know, evaluator or whatever, has him rated over B. John Robinson. I mean, just just be honest, be real. He's maybe a has the potential to be a better receiver because you know he he runs good routes, or whatever. And we saw him using that capacity, but who the f- cares? All right. Um, to assess, you consider retirement as a difficult 22, uh, 2022. Yeah, damn right. You should have, um, you know, we saw his fingers interlocked, convulsing on the ground and just almost foaming at the mouth. Suffered two bad concussions that we saw on uh, live national television. And he just should have been shut down. The Dolphins didn't really prioritize his health. And, you know, it is what it is. You know, they, we, <laughs> two, talking out, you know, two sides of uh, their mouth, saying that uh, we prioritize, you know, player safety, but then, you know, putting this guy on the field when he obviously was, you know, shaken, stirred like he was a fucking martini, and he, he you know, alcoholic beverage. So, um, hopefully, the protocol will be better, and that you know, things like that won't transpire, won't repeat themselves in a twenty twenty three season. But we'll see. All right, Shaq Leonard, the linebacker for the Colts, feels like he hurt them playing in twenty twenty two. Yeah, man, like, there's a difference between being injured and hurt. Like, if you're injured, you can play through those. But, you know, if you're hurt, man, like, there's only so much you can do. You're going to be limited in capacity to uh, play to your full, you know, full extent. Or, like, if you can play to at least 80% of your capacity, you should, you know, try and push through it, be out there. But if you're really compromised out there, you know, you're going to be picked on. It's like Boston's, not Boston's got, um, I forget his name, Scott. He wasn't hurt, but it's like, a player playing to that level and going out there just for the sake of, you know, their name or for, for the money, for the incentives, for um, a streak. Yeah, man, just sit down and heal up. If you got it, I mean, like, yeah, you got you to gotta sit down, you know, sit down. Think about this. Five out of five seasons, uh, Rashard Penny's been hurt and nobody bats an eye, nobody calls him up. Because he was hurt, he's hurt. <laughs> all right. Um, and that's all we're going to get into today, man. A uh, longer video, cool, but I mean, it's all good because you're not even watching, though. But like I said, it's fine. It's fine because, as always, it's fly, eagles, fly, and let's mother can go. Thanks for watching. Check me out at Centron, Centron Anime, Centron Life. Or Cintron laughs, or other social media.